hi everyone so i just finished my step to ck exam and i am fresh with my entire experience the resources that i used my timeline some credible advice as well as a few regrets and i'm here to share all of that with you in all honesty so i hope this video is going to help anyone who's preparing for the step to ck exam All right. So starting with my timeline, uh, I had a dedicated period of about three months. That is May, June, July, and before my dedicated period, I was done with about forty percent of U World. I was studying for about one or two months, but then I had a break of four months due, due because of my clerkships, and that's why when I started studying again in May, I had almost forgotten whatever I had studied before that. and that's why i like to believe that my preparation was anywhere between 3 and a half to 4 months so the resources that i used were mainly u world at the time that i finished u world i had about 4044 questions and i had done about 4000 questions from u world um i also did a few divine intervention podcasts and i did the anki deck that is the pre made deck zanki Z A N K I. I did not complete the whole deck, but I did a couple of topics from it. I also used Anki to make my self deck and as well as images. So that's something that was very helpful, and I kept revising from it. The other resources was uh, the U World PDF, which is basically a compilation of all the high yield topics as well as tables. Um, it's good because it just tells you what all you you can be tested on. but it's very vast so i definitely didn't do the whole thing but i did a couple of topics from that the other resources are the nbme exams the cms forms as well as the u world essays and the free 120 these are more of a mock exams which you can do to help you simulate the real deal and i think the last but most important resource was my discussion with my friends because uh, they had already finished their septo exam and um, those discussions were extremely helpful to me this is all about the resources that i used now i would like to dive in into each resource and give you some of my hacks and tips which i think was game changer All right, so let's dive into the first resource that is U World and how to use it for the USMLE exams. Now, the first thing that I would recommend is it's it's four thousand questions, so it does not make sense to do those four thousand questions again, like in two passes. I don't think you'll have that kind of time, and a lot of bias is created because you would have already seen the questions. So what I did was I did a one the first pass, and then I did my incorrects and marked. and i think that was good enough to solidify the entire information i did random and timed most of the time uh and sometimes towards the end i started doing tutor just to go faster between the questions uh a few times i just did medicine or surgery so these were for my new questions my incorrects most of the time when i just started doing my incorrects i would do them subject wise so i would do like medicine blocks or pediatric blocks but towards the end i just started doing a random timed and tutor mode so i would just keep i would just solve the question and then quickly read the explanation and then move on so that was quite fast now how much time will you be taking for each block and how much time is okay to spend on each block so If you're taking in time mode, I suggest that you do that in random time. So you take forty, you take one hour to me finish those forty questions, and then anywhere between three and a half to four hours to review the block. So incorrects, I think towards the end, I was finishing the incorrects block between within two hours, taking the block as well as like revi doing the questions. because in those incorrects if i was getting them right then i would just read the educational objective and move on only if i was getting them wrong again then i'm like okay something's really wrong so i would like read the whole explanation coming to how you should review your world effectively um what i prefer to do is when i take the block there's an option um to select where you can just select the incorrects 
right so you select the incorrects and you review your incorrects first so that way something that you really didn't know is the first thing that goes into your head and you're still sharp and you're not tired and it's the first 10 12 questions that you need to do so that's one thing always review uh, review your incorrects before you do your corrects the second thing is i would always start with reading the educational objective um, just to know that okay this was what is needed from this entire explanation then if there's a table or an image or some kind of an flow chart i would first go i would then go to that and read it understand it and learn it as to the best of my ability and then i would read through when i come to the options i would first read the option that i selected like a b c d the correct answer was d and i selected c so i would first see the c option and try to figure out okay this is why this option was wrong and then i would read the rest so this way i would try to like learn or read the most important things in the whole explanation and then move on to the ones which weren't that important or something that i wouldn't know the next thing i would suggest is not to make notes and by that i mean handwritten notes try to avoid that because it just takes so much time to write it down and it's difficult to edit it so there's this amazing notebook feature on you world i highly suggest that you try it out all you have to do is just highlight and select whatever you need to add in your uh, notebook and by just one click you can add it on the notebook so my notebook what i did was i first made medicine surgery pediatrics the subject wise headings and then in that subheadings i made system wise and then i would just add on either the education objective or just like one line that i didn't know or a flow chart especially endocrinology is full of amazing flow charts from your world so i would just add that and in dermat i would just add all the images of skin lesions that was something with that was at the goal it was almost like my first aid because it was all high yield topics and i would revise that before every nbme or mock exam i have never been a, a fan of flashcards on you world i feel like i never get around using them so i never tried to make flashcards on that but i would make flashcards on anki droid that is the app and in my own deck i would make if i got something wrong or something i didn't know and especially images i would actually just click pictures and then make an anki card for it or you can just add it to your notebook those images so that you can just go through and that's like sometimes the same image from you world is repeated on the real day on your exam day so that would be very helpful so as i was nearing about 70 or 80% of you world I also started doing my incorrect side by side to just consolidate that information because I didn't want to wait until I finished the entire hundred percent of your world and then start my incorrects and I was like pressed with time. So you can also start doing that. You don't have to first finish the entire your world and then do your incorrects. You can just club all of them together. So I think that's all about your world. Uh, that's all the hacks and advice that I can give you. The next thing is to move on to the NBME and CMS forms and this is going to be a game changer for all of you I hope because it was extremely helpful for me uh when one of my friends had actually taught me to do this is to simulate an 8 hours exam every time you take a mock exam I had done three NBME exams that is 9 10 11 and the two U world essays uh one and two and i also added some new blocks from you world with the nbm exam so i always did an 8 hours long exam there's something that i would have done differently is i didn't have a lot of time to finish the cms forms so these cms forms are just 50 questions very small questions and they, these are available on the nbme website for 20 dollars and then the newer forms are 7 and 8 for each subject and the older forms are 5 and 6 i feel i had not done amboss question bank so i feel i needed some more different kind of questions and it just felt good to do those i didn't have enough time so what i would suggest is with your nbme you have four blocks in nbme 
just do like one or two CMS or three CMS forms. So you'll have an ATAS exam, you'll be finishing another resource with the thing and then you can make extra time to finish your UWorld. So that's something that I would highly recommend that you try. My last UWorld essay, I combined it with free 120. So again, it was, and then I did one block of UWorld. So again, it was an ATAS exam. How I scheduled my mock exams were one month before my uh, exam day, I took the UWorld essay. Two weeks after that, I took the NBME 11. And then one week after that, I took the UWorld essay. So I literally did three mock exams in the last month. And I did two mock exams before that every, I think I had a gap of about three weeks between the nine and 10 uh, NBME. And I also took the AMBOS self-assessment for step two. It usually happens, I guess, in May and it's free, of course. So I did that one as well. The next resource uh, is Divine Intervention Podcast and I regret not doing enough of it. I did a few of them because I had very little time. I did the risk factors, the military podcast, palliative care, the new changes, uh, ethics podcast, and a few of the rapid review series. Uh, and I found them extremely helpful. Sometimes you will get questions right out of the podcast. So I highly recommend if you are someone who's starting the preparation now, try to do at least one podcast um, in one or two in two days or three days when you're tired you can just listen to podcasts and do write down notes i usually used to type out on my phone um the topics because he shares a lot of information in just like 30 to 40 minutes and it's very easy to revise it later so that's one thing that i highly recommend divine intervention podcast he has a google sheet of all of the high yield podcasts or high yield episodes and he also has his notes so you can check them out the next one is of course anki flashcards i'm a big fan of it uh, especially during the beginning of my preparation i didn't use it as much towards the end but in the beginning you can definitely start doing flashcards at least that way you will the zanki flashcard uh, deck especially is just you world it's actually every question from you world that you will be asked so that way it's just like almost doing two passes of your world if you can actually finish the Zanki deck. The other thing that again I suggest is do make flashcards of the images. They are extremely high yield and very helpful. So I'm sure some of you might be wondering that, hey, where's first aid in the resources list? It's not there in the list at all because no one recommends it. I didn't try it at all. I did not buy it, but what I've heard from people who have actually tried it is that that it's not as updated as concise especially if they do suggest that if you if you want to use first aid if you want to go through some topics then you rather use the step one first aid instead of the step two ck first aid so instead of the textbook that is a first aid you can try to read your word pdf which is a consolidated high yield points and tables i found that very helpful how I selected which topics to read was I actually went back to your world and in that you have your topics and systems and you just go on the topics and then you see which one of it is more high yield which has more questions like actually patient safety had the maximum number of questions and then there were these other ethics questions and CVS topics so the first 40 topics I wrote them down and then uh, I read those say, topics on your PDF example like ischemic heart diseases or um, let's see stroke and pancreatitis these kind of topics that's what I read from your PDF the other thing I would suggest is to look at the uh, USMLE uh, outline exam outline it will give you an idea of what is being asked um, if you I didn't go through the entire thing I just glanced through and um, I did know that it would be helpful but I figured about it towards the end of my preparation so if you're starting your preparation now and you want to know okay what should I read from the UWorld PDF what kind of questions should I, con should I concentrate on 
if you want to watch some videos on online medit or youtube then you can just uh, watch on those particular topics so some random hacks and advice that i would like to give all of you which i feel really helped me was uh, when you're planning your entire timeline and preparation and you keep one day you block one day each for your mock exam block the next day also for review the next one or two days because you have ndme for um blocks so you you'll at least take a day to review that and then if you're doing like three extra blocks or you're doing cms forms you'll take another day to review that and that was really helpful because that way i had some buffer time also after each mock exam and what i learned was number of hours is equivalent to your knowledge so you can't be doing like just three or four hours every day and expect to know everything that you need to know and this is something that i regret i feel like earlier on in my preparation i should have put more time average more time at least six or seven hours so i feel you can start with like four to five hours initially then move on to at least seven to eight hours and at least pull nine hours towards the end of your preparation if you are giving about three or four months for your um, preparation time so yeah give in the time as much as you can the next thing is do apply for your exam well in advance and just get your scheduling permit get that stress out of your mind you can always choose your date later so i got my scheduling permit and then i think one month before my exam date i chose uh, i scheduled it for the prometric center so that way at least i'll know okay now i have one month left and it just changes your mindset quite a lot and i i suggest that you first take a mock exam see if if this is close to your goals and then uh, book your exam date the next hack is gold because this really helped me is you discuss with your friends find a study partner either who is doing the preparation with you or who has already finished i did it with my friend and it was so helpful to me because it's like they will know what is high yield they've already gone through it and it will save you time and when you discuss with someone and someone is actually actively asking you questions and they tell their thought process it really helps you also shape yours so try to find out good study partners another regret of mine was the way i reviewed and studied and gained knowledge so i felt like i should have put some more smart effort in learning it sometimes it's like you don't realize but you're just actually passively reading and you don't pick up on the extremely important link between that question and the answer the correct answer and the incorrect answer you don't differentiate them really well like just take for example conus medullaris and quadra equina syndrome there are very subtle differences which you should pick up and i feel you world is great it has everything it's just so why we need other resources actually to supplement your world because sometimes you world when you're reading it yourself you miss out on those points and this is one thing that i learned was that when you add a table into your notebook right just see in that table what was like that one line that you didn't know e example um in ulcerative uh, colitis you there would be some one thing that you didn't know okay highlight that and highlight only that the other things you will know that okay rectum is involved and they are more prone to uh, adenocarcinoma you know all of that so don't highlight that so when you're going through or revising your notebook you will look at the highlight point and be like hey yeah this is what i had missed that time so yeah always find the links always find something specific to that particular disease or topic or the next best step in management and try to revise it again and again the last thing is i feel like i did not do any other um, question bank like i did not do amboss and that's because i did not have the time cms forms i did only the 7 and 8 cms form of surgery and medicine uh, so that's something that i should have planned better i feel like if you're just starting your preparation do keep in some time i don't think amboss is an absolute necessity because well there are 4000 questions in your world and that's a lot all right so that brings us to the end of my preparation and resources my hacks and advice as well as regrets for all of you there are a few things that i'm extremely grateful about my family and friends their support was 
just unconditional and i don't think i could have done it without them so if you're someone who's starting the preparation do make sure that you have some family support and you're not alone in this journey i've done another video of my exam day experience and how i thought the questions and answer choices were so check that out if you are prepare if you're going for the exam soon and don't forget to subscribe and like and share this video with anyone who's in this USMD journey. I have also done a few videos on the documents that you need for your clerkships and um, the entire process, uh, the entire timeline of your USMD journey. So do check them out on my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day and all the very best for your exams. Bye.